Hello everybody and welcome back to Bulk Mythic here on YouTube. Today is the day that we're going to crack into this Modern Horizons 2 bundle box that I got from Brute Force Games downtown and see what we get in there. Now I will tell you this right now, Modern Horizons 2, I've only had a couple of opportunities to play with it, but it's turning out to be a lot of fun to play. I've played one paper pre-release, I've played the tabletop virtual games that same weekend as a pre-release and then I've also played one draft and in all of those I've had a really good time playing with this set of cards and there's a lot of really good stuff in there so let's go ahead and crack these open and see what we can find a pencil box out of the way first things first looking in here here's that squirrels insert that has the same thing there there's a letter here from uh wizards of the coast dear magic fan thank you so much for picking up this modern horizons 2 bundle your support and participation means so much to us we're able to continue creating sets like this because of players like you etc etc sincerely wizards of the coast all right and then let's go ahead and check out what art they included on the inside of the bundle sleeve find the seam here very carefully peel it apart. Get this extra glue off out of the way. So it's not sticking to our cards. And there we go. Dacon Black Blade. And this is the alternate or sketch art for the Planeswalker card. That's pretty cool right there. Awesome. All right, we'll set that to the side and get into what's inside our amazing bundle box again very sturdy box the quality has remained the same ever since they came out with this new model here is the die the exclusive die for the bundles it's got a this one's a turquoise and violet kind of uh swirl pattern with gold numbering that's pretty cool and then get into the packs so let's see what we've got and the foil promo rare is Eurisi Fortune's Flame. One blue and a red for a legendary creature, a Freet. It's a 2-3 with flying. And whenever Eurisi Fortune's Flame attacks, choose a number between 1 and 5, flip that many coins. And for each flip you win, draw a card. For each flip you lose, Yuri deals 2 damage to you. If you've won 5 flips this way, you may cast spells from your hand this turn without paying the mana cost. So, do you want to risk 10 of your life with the opportunity to draw 5 cards and then that rare instance that you win all 5 of those flips, do you get the chance to cast everything without paying the mana cost? And then we got a bunch of these amazing foil lands. Two of each, one of each different art. For 10 foil lands and then you've got the non foils in this pack right here I'm not gonna open those up right now because this is what we really want to see what is in these draft booster packs so I'm really impressed with the fact that the draft booster packs have a decent opportunity of getting sketch cards and foils and all that kind of cool stuff so you know the all the value isn't lost in the draft booster packs you still have opportunity of getting some good stuff there so our first one karmic guide a reprint here three generic and two white for a two two flying angel spirit with protection from black and an echo cost of three white white and then when it enters the battlefield return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield so you have recursion there which is why it's so expensive and then you have to pay for it twice because you can get something big back we have a second rare here for search the premises which is three and a white for an enchantment whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control investigate so a little bit of a uh pillow 40 kind of deck not that it really protects you from attacking but it makes your opponents think twice about it because do they want to give you the opportunity to draw a card later on and if you have other artifact or clue synergies in your deck, then you might 
make them really think twice. Here's Arcbound Mauser, a one one with Life Leak Modular One. There were a lot of uh, a lot of modular creatures, especially in white. Here's one of the sketch cards, Bl Blossoming Calm for a white mana. You gain hexproof until your next turn, gain two life, and it has rebound. So giving you hexproof for two turns, that's pretty powerful for one white mana there. Let you play your turn without too without having to worry about too much interaction directly targeting you. Doesn't protect the creatures you control though. Bone Shredder here is a Doom Blade on a 1-1 one, one for three. And there's Damn! This is one of the probably most hyped cards of the entire set. Black black for sorcery that says to destroy target creature and that creature can't be regenerated or overload for an additional two generic and two white to Wrath of God essentially. So you've got a six mana Wrath but you can cast it in the early game to remove one creature if you really need that removal spell. So that's a pretty awesome card right there. It's going to be played in a lot of different formats from modern to commander to all those ones like when you need options early and then you don't want your early cards to end up dead in your hand later in the game that's the kind of stuff that you're looking for right there so what else do we got going on here i'm already really really happy here's a an old border Ariomiva, a sketch phantasmal death or dread moth a sketch flame tongue yearling this card is really fun to play in in limited for sure is Lazatep Chancellor, a 1-3 for a blue and a black zombie wizard. Whenever you discard a card, you may pay an additional generic man if you do a mass 2. Extruder. And moderation for the rare. So that's one white and a blue for an enchantment. You can't cast more than one spell each turn. Whenever you do cast a spell, draw a card. So it gives you kind of some reverse tempo, but allows you to... Re uh, Replace every card you cast in your hand. So if you are doing things on both turns, or all the turns for that matter, a commander, then that can be pretty powerful to always get an extra card back in your hand. And a foil echoing return. And blue and white, those are probably the more interactive colors, in, uh, especially in commander. Except for maybe green. Green's been getting, getting a lot better, a lot more interactions. So... Uh, I have a feeling that that card may be seen fairly frequently anymore. Sketch Kitchen Imp. Terminal Agony. Removal Spell with Madness. Chatter Storm in the Old Border. For all the squirrels out there. I am hoping to open up plenty of the squirrel cards in this set. So that I can... Build out a squirrels deck. Archfiend of Sorrows. I have to see a flying four five for seven. When Archfiend of Sorrows enters the battlefield, creatures or potes control get minus two minus two until in a turn has unearthed. That might be a Kalia target there. Scuttle Tide. And here we have Tatiana, Protector of Argoth for the mythic rare. Three generic and two green mana for a five three legendary creature. It's an elemental. When Tatiana, Protector of Argoth, enters the battlefield, return target land from your graveyard to the battlefield. And whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 5-3 elemental creature token. So, kind of duplicates itself whenever you sacrifice a land. And if you have been sacrificing lands earlier in the game, you can recur one of those to, so you have at least one thing to sacrifice while she's on the battlefield. Here's a second rare here in Dermo Taxi, which I was listening to the Mana Pool podcast earlier. And is the first time I realized when they said it that it's Taxiderma, right? Taxidermist or Dermo Taxi. They basically reversed the syllables of the words to make it, which is pretty hilarious. But anyway, it's a two mana zero zero vehicle with imprint. You may exile a creature card from the graveyard when this enters the battlefield from any graveyard. And then tap two untapped creatures to uh, make it a copy of the exiled card, except it's a vehicle artifact in addition to its other types. So instead of having like a crew cost with a power total that you need, it's just tap two untapped creatures, so any two. And then it becomes 
a copy of the imprinted creature. And then we have a foil rare with Priest of Fell Rites. Now this is the one that I pack one, pick one at that draft and then forced black white recursion led me to an, a perfect undefeated streak in that draft it's a lot of fun and i see it going in a lot of aristocrat styles decks because of its ability to recur things from the graveyard so if you have to sacrifice something important you can get it back and with unearth you can return the card from the graveyard and then do it a second time so yes, it will exile itself after you unearth it, whether you sacrifice it to its ability or anything else, because it has left the battlefield that turn. But at least you get the opportunity to recur two things within the game. So a lot of really good pulls so far. This is turning out to be an, an, an excellent box, which I think has more to do with how awesome this set is. Late to dinner, this is a card that I had to pass early in a pack at that draft and hoped it would come back around, which it didn't. It was unfortunate, but not too, too upset about it. Breathless Night was another key piece of that same draft. They ended up with two of those. Mere Scrappling. I don't know if you're an Infect or a modular player. I think it's Infect, really, that uses the Arcbound Ravager in Modern. Is this... Are these cards a big help to you? Uh, I haven't seen a lot about Infect in competitive play for a while but if uh if it's a thing if it's going to come back with these cards go ahead and leave a comment down there and tell me what you think if that's going to happen and here's a rashad and deckhand as well as a squirrel token so i haven't seen too many of the squirrels i've got the was it the, the hybrid green black one mana squirrel it's got death touch and the chitter storm but I haven't seen the legendary squirrel yet or any of the other rare ones. Jade Avenger. I know we saw a regular art one, but here's the sketch one right here. One in a green for a two tooth Bushido two. Actually very powerful card, especially in limited. Because when you have a, a, a two mana two two that can rumble in against a three power creature or something like that because it gets pumped up if it gets blocked, then that's kind of a big deal. And then if, if you have the ability to give it trample, then that extra power that keeps it alive is able to push through to your opponent as well. There's an old border mind collapse. That's pretty neat. And then coming up to our rare and our reprint slots. Here's our reprint is Patchwork Gnomes. I remember this card from oh, way back in the day uh, when I was actually playing in school. But it's a 2-1 for 3 artifact creature gnome. Discard a card to regenerate patchwork gnomes. So an interesting little uh, aggressive piece to the discard strategy because you can just shove it in there because you want to discard cards anyway. So if they block, you're just going to regenerate it and move on. And here's Zabaz the Glimmer Wasp. So this one, from what I've seen so far, has been a bit of a disappointment. But I've heard whispers that it's getting played more and more often in some of the Infect and... Uh, modular strategies the artifact strategies so maybe this one's going to come up a little bit and uh, turn into something a little bit more for but for a uh, boros legendary artifact creature i'm sure there's a lot of things people can do with it so coming through here just a few more packs to go bone shards is a card i had to pass a couple of them in that draft and uh none of them ever came back around weirdly enough i know it's hard to believe that something like that would never come back around. The Converge cards in this set are pretty interesting. A lot of fun, too. And here's a Gorilla Shaman. So I did have an, a Liquid Metal Torque up here in Limited. Again, I've said this before. This isn't as powerful as you would think it is in Limited just because, like, it's non-creature artifacts. And the artifact lands are indestructible however with a liquid metal torque you can turn basics into artifact lands and then destroy them for one mana so i did that in the spell table event in one game and destroyed like three planes against a player who was playing like three different colors and white was one of their 
more prominent colors and they just never had the mana that they that they needed to cast anything it felt bad but it felt good at the same time because it just let me do whatever i wanted and they weren't able to cast anything out of their hand so that is a strategy that you can use in limited otherwise i don't see a lot of use at least in the main board for the for the uh actual for the actual gorilla shaman but here we have Brea's apprentice in our rare slot two and a red for a two three when it enters the battlefield created one one thopter artifact creature token with flying and then you could tap sacrifice an article artifact to either exile the top card of your library until the end of turn or sorry until your the end of your next turn you may play that card and target creature gets plus two plus zero oh, until end of turn so a, a few of Brea's abilities on that card right there it might be a good support card in a Brea deck, Brea Artifacts deck. Not to mention the fact that you get a 1-1 Thopter with it too. So a 2-3 for 3 already is pretty good. It's basically on rate at this point. Um, but getting an additional 1-1 one, one is, is huge. Now, Tormod's Crypt Keeper, I don't know if uh, if that's doing anything in a lot of the constructed competitive formats. I know it's Tormod's Crypt on a creature, but maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll see if anything happens with it. And then we have Karmic Guide, the three mana two. So it's the second Karmic Guide out of this pack. I'm just going to do a little uh, bookkeeping here, get some of our my piles in the right places, double check my rarities. So when I'm sorting by rarities, I don't know if you guys do this, but I do it because then all I have to do is see the uh, see the actual rarity symbol there. If I turn the cards upside down, but another Karmic Guide, and then we have Grief, another big mythic out of that slot right there. Two and two black for an Elemental Incarnation, it's a three two with Menace, and when it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it, and they discard that card. And you have Evoke to exile a black card from your hand. So it's always sorcery speed, but it's it's essentially, you know, a thought seize without the life loss. You just give up a card for it instead. Or if you hard cast it, which is not hard to cast a 3-2 for 4. So unlike the other uh, Evoke cards that have the exile, a card of the same color out of your hand, this one is not that over cost. It is not unreasonable to actually just cast this card and get that into the battlefield ability to be able, and be able to keep the creature without going down a card in hand. So big, big pull right there. I'm sure I'll find a home for it either in a deck that I have or in my trade binder so somebody else can put it to use and I can get some more value out of it. So really, really nice one there. Here's a Verdant Command. In the rare slot here, one and a green. You can choose two of either target player creates two tapped 1-1 one, one squirrel creature tokens. Counter target loyalty ability of a planeswalker. Exile target card from a graveyard or target player gains three life. So those first two are probably, actually I think two and three are probably the most common ones that are going to be called up on this card. But it's not a bad set of choices right there. And at the very least, you get, you know, two tapped squirrels. And then you have Terra Morph. Is our foil here? A three and a green for a sorcery to search your library for basic land. Put on the battlefield, then shuffle with rebound. So it's four mana to get two lands over two turns. And they do not enter the battlefield tapped. So big card there for the ramp decks. Especially, you know, in Commander being able to just get two extra lands. Let's see what else we got here. Late to dinner sketch card. Now that is just amazing looking. It just looks like, you know, straight up napkin sketch of somebody like, well, here's the general idea, right? Mood, a friendship that can outlast death. Pretty hilarious. Here's abundant harvest. This one was a sneak peek in the, the list from the previous set. Here's Ravenous Squirrel, the one I was talking about. It's either green or a black for a 1-1. When you sacrifice an artifact or creature, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Ravenous Squirrel. And you can pay one, a black, and a green to sacrifice an artifact or creature. 
to gain one life and draw a card. So three mana, gain a life, draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Ravenous Squirrel. Or if you're sacrificing a, a for, <clears throat> excuse me, through any other means, you're growing this squirrel here. And then here's Douthy Voidwalker. Man, this has been all over the magic news, hasn't it? Who hasn't talked about this card yet? Black, black for a 3-2. Douthy Robe with Shadow. If a card, which for those who don't know what Shadow is, uh, any creature with Shadow can only be blocked by other creatures with Shadow. And they themselves can only block creatures with Shadow. So it's a level of evasion that's probably greater than flying with the exception that you are taking away a block or two unless your opponent is playing shadow as well. But, you know, with a 3-2 two for two, you're probably being pretty aggressive with it. Let's check out what else this guy does. All right, if a card will be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, instead exile it with a void counter on it, and then you can tap and sacrifice the void walker to choose an exiled card an opponent owns with a void counter on it, you may play it this turn without paying its mana cost. So anything that goes into your opponent's graveyard while this is in play gets exiled instead. And at any time after that, that you feel like you want to uh, exchange Dalithy Void Walker for that card, you could tap and sacrifice it and then you get to cast that card. Whether it's a permanent spell, whatever it is, that's that's a big deal because that just gives you access to your your opponent's entire graveyards. And then we have a foil recalibrate. So this box, holy cow, I cannot believe what we ended up with here. We got Douthy Voidwalker. We got Grief. We got two Karmic Guides, Bray's Apprentice, a Rashad in Deckhand, Foil Priest of Fell Rites, Tatiana, and Damn! as well as a search of premises. So a lot of really good rares, a lot of playable commons and uncommons out of just 10 booster packs. So I hope you guys enjoyed this opening. Now I know I've been talking about it and I haven't, haven't cracked it open yet, but I still have that set booster box. I promise you the absolute next video, which I'm going to record this week and get published a little bit later on will be, me beginning to open up those cards because i gotta get that box open to tell you the truth because we're about to go into the realm of dungeons and dragons so i'm gonna have a whole nother box of cards to open up come mid july so stay paying attention to the channel make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you know when these videos are coming and you can jump on and check them out leave a comment below if there's something in modern horizons 2 that you're excited about playing and go ahead and share this with a friend to let people know that we're out there sharing our hobby together.